friends, this is Jaya Kapoor from the University of Allahabad. Today we are doing paper 2, module 15, Women and Theatre in India, part 2. Natya Shastra and women's position, spatial sexual duality is what we are going to look at today. There are three classes of women according to Natya Shastra, homely, public and mixed. Regarding the homely, that is Abhigya Mitra, a woman belonging to a high family is a homely. A king's union can take place with a homely woman. The king may have union with a heavenly courtesan as well, the conduct which is approved by their being married. The second, public, Liya Jaja. A courtesan is a public, a Baliu woman. Common man may unite with a public woman. A public woman is never desired by a king and she does not receive his courtesies. The mixed, a thoroughly tested mucut woman, if she is a maiden of high family, is of mixed class. Lassia is a form mentioned by Bharat Muni in chapter 20 of his Natya Shastra. The woman's dance style, Lassia, is replete with Sringar Ras while the male choreography is loaded with Tandav movements. It classifies eight kinds of heroines. Naika, one dressed up for union, that is Rasak Sajja, one distressed by separation, which is Viraha Hoth Khandita, one having her husband in subjugation. Sradhin Bhartak, one separated from her lover by quarrel. Kalah Antarita, an enraged with her lover, Khandita, one deceived by her lover, Vipral Bhat, one with a sojourning husband, Prosti, and one who moves to her lover, Abhisarika. Types of characters, order of female characters, a superior woman, a superior female character, Uttam is a woman who has a tender nature, is not fickle or cruel, speaks smilingly, is obedient to her superiors. Bashful, good-mannered, has physical charm as well as high birth and other natural qualities and is grave and patient, is known to be superior or uttam character. A middling or madhyam female character, a woman who does not possess these qualities to a great extent and always has some slight faults mixed with some, is known to be the middling or madhyam character. An inferior me female character is a description of the inferior male characters will generally apply in case of female characters of that type. A mixed character, a homophrotite, is known as the character of mixed sankirn, an inferior type. Maid servants and the likes are also characters of mixed types. Four types of heroines. They are always heroines in dramatic works. I shall now speak of heroines who are four classes. A goddess, a queen, a woman of high family and courtesan, which is number one. These may, according to the characteristics, be of four types. Self-controlled, dhir, light-hearted, lalit, exalted, uddat, and modest, nirbhata. Goddesses may possess all these qualities and women of high family may be exalted and modest, while the courtesan and craftswomen, light-hearted and exalted. Stri Preksha, an exclusive female zone. Women have limited admission in the male space. The term Stri Preksha was first adopted by Kautilya, the author of Arthashastra in the 4th century, indicating plays performed exclusively by female artists. The Devadasi in the service of God. As their name suggests, they were Devadasis or attendants to God. They served God through dance and music. Devdasis, Ganikas, Nati are all served the Indian theatre tradition for a very long time. They came under attack in the beginning of 1830s by the Victorian morality and social reformist programs. Women and folk form performances. Exclusion of women from camaraderie of theatre is also recorded in other forms of folk traditions. Ras Leela, Ram Leela, Jatra, Nautanki, Tamasha, Bhavai, Ayappam and many more. Gulab Bai as a female backward caste was the first woman to perform Nautanki. Women directors. During 19th century, many female authors carved out an important place for themselves in the genre of fiction and poetry. The stage remained close to them. 
29 years or so have seen significant changes in this respect. Indian theatre is no longer a male preserve, it used to be. Women directors, previously a rarity, have come to the fore. Names like Lakshmi Chandra, Chaman Ahuja, Ipshita Chandra, Usha Ganguly, Neelam Man Singh Chaudhary, Rani Balbir Kaur, Shail, Sheila Bhatia, B. J. Shri, Arundhati Rajay, S. Malti, Swamya Varma, Gauri Datta, Nadira Babbar, Shailja, Anuradha Kapoor, Amal Allana are notable for their contribution. Journals and critics and dramaturges. Evidence of this explosion of women dramatists and directors in India can be found both in the regularity with which major journals like Theatre India, Seagull Theatre Quarterly, Rang Prasang, Natarang now often publish feminist theatre criticism, history and anthologies and critical books on women's drama make a regular appearance. Tutun Mukherjee has edited an anthology of women dramatists titled Staging Resistance, ways by, plays by women in translation, published by Oxford Press. Body Blows, Women, Violence and Survival, published by Seagull, 2000, among, many, uh, among several plays and translated works. Plays by and about women continue to be written and produced, but the most striking development in the domain of gender and drama in the present times has been the emergence of a rich and diverse array of writings in feminist criticism and theory. Lakshmi Subramaniam edited a volume on theatre criticism titled Muffled Voices, Women in Modern Indian Theatre. Apart from these, we have noteworthy critics like Aparna Dharvarkar, Maya Pandit, Vasudha Dalmia, Kirti Jain, Deepa Gehlot, among many others. Journals and theatre criticism, Indian Theatre, Theatre India, Seagull Theatre Quarterly, Rang Prasang, Bharat Rang, Nat Rang now often publish feminist theatre criticism, history and theory. Feminist theatre is as much about a local endeavour as a theatrical one. Since Nati Shastra and poetic dramatic texts, performances were dominated by male ideologies, but plays written and performed by women undermine the classical Indian aesthetic in which a single protagonist follows a linear plot. Usha Ganguly's Antaryatra is an example where focusing on an ensemble, the feminist belief is that the group is more important than the individual. To take the example of a solo written and performed by Usha Ganguly, Antaryatra, The Eternal Journey of an Actress. The 63-year-old actress-director weaves an autobiographical introspection with the voice of famous women theatrical characters into a rich narrative of feminine consciousness. Antaryatra is a play in which Usha Ganguly uses herself as a point of reference to narrate the story of an actress's struggle through life. She attempts to explore Indian women's psyche through a variety of characters like Nora, Himmat, Himmat Mai, Rudali, Kamla, Anima. Her experiences obviously enrich her one woman show. Antaryatra is a tribute to at least a dozen crucial female heroines played by Ganguly, who is representative of lives of women, each one belonging to a distinct social space yet bound in some way by the virtue of being a woman. In Antaryatra, there is a whole history of Indian womanhood played out in large enough social space covering a middle class home in urban working, rural women, extreme margins as well as dramatic moments in the history in 19th century Bengal, fascist Germany and 17th century 30 years war in Germany. <coughs> a journey within and without. The drama here is not born out of conflict, but rather out of juxtapositioning of characters and stories, the relationship they share with the performer, director, writer, producer of the play. Tripurari Sharma's Reshmi Rumal draws from many women whom she had met and come to know. It explores the dreamland that women built within the four walls of a Haveli. There was often the dearth of substantive female roles. The Western and Indian theatre had perpetuated a masculine perspective of the world at the expense of feminine. Rangkarmi's Beti Ai, Amal Allana's Nati Vinodini are examples. A play like Women's Issues, which focuses on discrimination against the girl child. This uh, women play highlighting the problems of women as a whole has been raised through narration and enactment, written by Jyoti Mapsekar. Nati Vinodini is one of the most outstanding stage actresses of Calcutta stage 
who ruled supreme for more than a decade. 1873 to 1886, beginning at the tender age of 11. Then she quit the theater scene when she found herself moving towards spiritualism. After she quit the stage, she married a local zamindar who had waited for her for years. The couple had a daughter, Shakuntala, who died when she was 11, followed by Binodini's husband, leaving the cursed woman to live in a state of perpetual isolation and loneliness. It was a strikingly original presentation where five Vinodhanis occupied the stage at the same time. One of them plays the doddering old Vinodhani in the present, writing out her autobiography and often entering into a discourse with the ghost of Girish Ghosh, the teacher mentor, the historic personality of Bengali stage on a wheelchair. The wheelchair is a metaphor for Ghosh whose theatre almost crippled after Vinodhani left. As the old Binodhani reads out from the writings, the scenes move back to reveal four other Binodhanis of different ages and made up identically, sometimes narrating the story of Binodhani's life, sometimes enacting scenes from her plays. As time goes into depression, born, shattered life, the focus was more on the emotional and sexual exploitation of Binodhani by her mother. By the first man whose mistress she was forced to be, the Girish Ghosh, then Vinodhani, the actress, Ghosh persuaded Gurmukh Rai, a wealthy Marwari admirer, as his keep so that they could close down the theatre and she could be saved. Rejecting his offer of 50,000, she was asked to build a theatre. He agreed on the condition that the theatre would be called B Theatre, B standing for Vinodhani. In the celebration of a rich contribution to theatre, yet when the time came, members of the group did not like keep to the promise. It was Christian Star Theatre that was felt that a theatre house named after a prostitute would fail to draw an audience. Identity and gender. Also embedded in the structure of many feminist plays is the argument that identity and gender are not fixed or innate but rather dynamic and culturally created. For example, Gitanjali Shri's Umrao, Tripurari Sharma's Ladumasi, written by Gitanjali Shri and directed by Anuradha Kapoor. The play Umrao is based on the life of a courtesan who questions the stereotypical image of the courtesan and therefore the woman as a sexual object, an embodiment of beauty, of glamour and women as victim. This is not only achieved through narrative and the text but also casting a middle-aged actress in the role of this legendary glamorous courtesan. Kapoor also breaks the linearity of the narrative to be able to accommodate different points of view about characters and relationships and deals with great complexity the notions of time, space, memory, gender, sexuality and guilt. Umrao attempted to know the life of a courtesan behind the image that gets created. Courtesans come to embody the old ideal and could only figure in the literature as instruments of sexual recreation or golden-hearted victims of society, objects of elite pity. Umrao in the courtesan narrative has been constructed by the male gaze. Umrao Jan Ada, a novel by in Urdu by Mohammad Hadi Ruswa, was adapted by Gitanjali Shri. It was directed by Anuradha Kapoor, produced by Vivadi. Splain introduces a male writer and a modern-day woman writer in the play. <coughs> we see the courtesan as a woman. The character was deconstructed to see the public and the private face. Umrao sails through love's rejection, but the novel does not dwell upon what she feels. The novel ends with a major speech by Umrao herself, who is now old. It is a didactic in content and is one of the main statements that the novel makes. She warns other women not to follow her fallen path, for though she had great moments in her life, extracted most from it, she is now old and abandoned and has nobody to love. So she advises other women to be honourable. In this play, this speech is turned around and another is introduced. Umrao does not see herself as fallen, but is placed in a mixed situation. She talks about positive and negative things in life and defines herself as an intelligent woman, not a prostitute, and claims that she has handled vagaries of life intelligently and creatively. For the male writer, Ruswa, Umrao's life is over, but the present-day woman writer looks at her and asks, what else? Umrao pauses and then utters a great line. But now I will turn over. Karvat in Lekin Abham Karvat Badalte Hain is what she says. Karvat has both literal and metaphorical meaning. For Umrao's life is not over. 
Omrao had two divergent meanings, one from Ruswa's ending which was didactic and the other alternative ending where Omrao turns around one phase finished, the other started. Tripurari Sharma's Ladu Mossi is a comedy that was inspired by Graham Greene's novel Travels with My Aunt as also by a number of old women who enjoy traveling, seeing places even if they are cloaked as pilgrims. Their undaunting spirit, love of adventure leads them into interesting pathways and most importantly it breaks an image. The goal of almost all feminist groups is to subvert expectations to enable or initiate positive changes through political and theatrical representations. For example, Verboluti by Jan Natya Manch, Bahu by Tripurari Sharma, a street play performed in Purva, Verboluti by Jan Natya Manch is a little girl refuses to be cowed down by despite the family favoring the male child. The dutiful middle class women prevent her daughter from being married off to corrupt official. A factory worker insists on separate toilet for women being added to the union demands. Tripurari Sharma's Bahu, the first play she ever wrote, deals with the oppression of women. It is about a woman who no, known throughout the play as Bahu. Bahu leaves her marital house not only escape from the claustrophobic Haveli but also as a rejection of the values that go with it. In rejecting the patriarchal world and her claim to the house, she has in fact laid stronger claims to life. When after the passage of time she sees her husband Ramdath who recognizes her, he says, uh, A, A, listen, she turns around, she says, my name is Umavati. Ramdath says, Umavati, oh yes, of course. By articulating her name, Umavati, the Bahu for long known as Bahu articulates her identity. Ramdath asks her to return, she refuses. He then asks for the child, but he is adamant. He cannot possess what he has disowned at birth. Child belongs to her and her alone. She walks away from firm and calm. Like Shakuntala, she maintains a distance and seeks no reconciliation. But unlike Shakuntala, she stakes her claim to the child. We can also draw a parallel of Umavati with Sita, who prefers to be absorbed by the earth rather than return to Ayodhya. Relationships, sisterhood, sexuality, female autonomy. Feminist theatre focuses on female characters and explores relationships of sisterhood, sexuality, female autonomy. For example, Usha Kanguli's Rudali is based on Mahashweta Devi's story. It presents the bonding of women's empowerment by turning them into professional mourners. Her adaptation of Mahashweta Devi's text Rudali, which centers on two women who develop a partnership for survival, won the Best Director Award in 1992. Several forum have successfully played the theatrical adaptation. Central character Sanichari is named so because she was born on a Saturday. The society recognizes it as an inauspicious to be born on a Saturday. She has been inauspicious for her family, has no one survived after her birth. She tells the story of the woman Sanichari abandoned by her mother shortly after the father's death. Bad fortune follows as she marries an alcoholic who leaves her with little hope of a brighter future for herself and her son. Throughout Sanichari's life, misfortunes, she has never cried. She never cried even when her son died. Sanichari is simply led to more misery that will surely bring her to tears. Sanichari, whose life has been nothing but a string of sad incidents, is so used to sadness that she never cries even after her husband's death. Not cared, not loved by anybody, she reserves all her love only for her son Budwa. But ultimately, she becomes a wailer, which means woman weeping as a job and getting remuneration to wail. Sanichari as a character represents sections which do not have freedom of choice, absence of means, but it is never broken. The title is a reference to the custom in certain areas of Rajasthan where women are hired as professional mourners after the death of a male relative. These women are referred to as Rudali, literally translated as female weeper. Their purpose is to publicly express grief of family members that are not permitted to display emotions due to social status. This creates great difficulty. Once she is called to become a Rudali, until Bhikni, an experienced mourner, enters her life. But she has to meet a Rudali, Bhikni, to, changes, to change her life. When <coughs> Bade Thakur dies, 
and after the arrival of Rudali, Bhigni, the story of Sanichari slowly comes out. Sanichari, the happy mother at the start of the story, slowly matures and mellows down and as the later part, she is an emotionally dead person. Theatre as a mode of intervention. Here theatre is used as a mode of intervention on women's behalf, men for departing from conventional way of producing and staging plays. We Padmas, who is guilty, cry the womb, umbilical cord, pacha mannu, address the issue of female infanticide and feticide. It was staged by All India Democratic Association in 1986. The form of the play was that of debate. It tried to reason out the casual aspect of this crisis and place the whole system of accountable. Next play, Karpatin Kural performed by Sakhi, the women's cultural troupe of AIDWA and Chennai Kalai Kazua. It deals with the issue assertion of hope in the newborn. The play takes a sympathetic look at the attitude towards the mother who is forced to kill her baby. The next play, Umbilical Cord, made the fetus speak for its rights to survive. The play took a humorous vein. It used the myth of Prahlad, learning the lessons in religion from the mother's womb or that of <clears throat> Parikshito were hearing from within the womb of his mother a specific mode of warfare described by his father and only partially. Myth of Arjun's son learning half of a marital, uh, of a martial feat from his mother's womb in Mahabharat. It was produced and performed by Voicing Silence in 1994. Five men, five women. The workshop evolved through an exchange of personal experiences and discussions, research findings and a spirit of togetherness. What is shown in Pacha Malu is everyday reality with a subtle critique of the same. The play was later performed in the village of Tamil Nadu, moving through village streets, beating the tappu, singing sons, songs. Imagery was used in a significant way by using simple props and visually con concretized the deep personal experience of gender socialization. The oil press scene evolved out of the traditional mode of extracting oil. In this scene, the girl is molded through a list of, do of don'ts like don't walk straight, do not giggle, do not study too much. The scene presents the parents as the nodal agency of socialization, symbolized by the center pole and long rope of their hands is held by a man driving the girl bent like a bullock. However, to make the play appealing in its Freirian ideology and Augustus Ball's techniques are used, the flexibility of the play demanded that the actors improvise, interact and participate. It also draws audience into discussion and the onus of decision making was rested on them. The content of their plays have ranged from reworking of uh, traditional myths to current social issues. Poili Sen Gupta, uh, Shankar Shesh, Varsha Adalja, Malika Sarabhai are some examples. Conclusion. It stands at the intersection of art, activism and social relevance. It challenges the established notions of theatre, explores the women's own unique idiom. Modern theatre, thereby, is a tool for conscientization, for critiquing social disparities, de deconstructs patriarchal, dualistic rethinking, restructures, notion of power. It creates an interconnected community void of hierarchies where all members have their own intrinsic value. Thank you.